Hey guys, in my last video, I showed how I took an in-person lesson that I would normally do with my students and translated that into a module on Canvas. In this video, I will be showing how I created those individual pieces that I added to that module. If you remember from my last video, when my students clicked on Get Started, it took them to the very first page of the module, which was Instructions. Now let's take a look at what that looks like in the actual module view. Here you can see I have this Petunia Goose module. You can really set modules up however you'd like. Maybe it's by day, maybe it's by week, by lesson. Um, obviously for the purpose of this video, I did it for just one lesson on this Petunia Goose, but you can really set it up however you would like. Again, this is that instructions page that we just looked at, and that's what was linked on that Get Started button on my homepage. I am gonna show you exactly how I created this module. You can see that I use mostly pages, but I do have a discussion and an assignment. To start a new module, I'm gonna click on the plus module button and then name my module. I'm gonna name it Petunia Goose 2 and then click add module. It will add the module at the very bottom. So I'm gonna scroll down, click on the three dots and bring that module up to the top. Currently, this module does not have anything in it. I could use pages that I've already created, but since I'm showing you how to do that, I'm going to build them right inside of the module. I'm gonna start by clicking on the plus button, and then from the dropdown, I'm gonna click page, and then I'm gonna click new page, and then I'm gonna call this my uh, instructions for Petunia, and then click add. I'm gonna continue adding the other items to my module. You'll notice that these next items have an emoji in front of them. So it's nice as I can do that same process again. It's already on page. And this time I'm going to use the quick key control command space bar on my Mac keyboard, which is going to bring up my emoji keyboard. And now I can select an emoji to use for that title. And then click add item. I'm now going to add the rest of the pages for this module. The next item I'm going to add is a discussion. It's a little bit different than a page. When I click the plus button from the drop down, I am going to select discussion and then I'm going to do a new topic and then give my topic a name. The last thing I'm going to add is the assignment. So again, same process, but selecting assignment from the drop down. Again, I'm going to use that emoji keyboard and add the name of my assignment. Now, in my module, I do have this stop page that I add. I can actually use that same stop page over and over again without creating a new one. So this time, I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to add my page. I forgot to add the, I always forget this one. The brain one, grow your brain. Then I'm gonna add that and then go in and I'm gonna use a pre-existing page for this. So I'm gonna go ahead now, find my stop page and add that in. You can have the same page in multiple modules. So this is the exact same page that is in my original, um, but I don't have to create a new one. I can use a pre-existing one for that. So now this has created blank, brand new pages that all I have to do is click on to be able to edit. So when I click on my instructions for Petunia number two, it takes me to a blank page. I can click edit and then add the content that I'd like to add. You can add videos, you can add graphics, uh, you can do a lot within the rich content editor to be able to deliver content to your students. I again use the emoji keyboard here to be able to give a visual for my younger learners. Then when I'm done editing this page, I'll click save. Then from here, I can just quickly click the next button and it will take me to that next blank page where I can click edit and then add the content into my rich content editor. My district does use studio. So in my other video, this showed me reading that story to my students and I've recorded that in studio and then embedded it in this page. When I'm done editing this page, I can click save and again, quickly click the next button to be able to edit the next page. 
Once I have added content to all of the pages, I am then ready to edit my discussion. I am now ready to add content and instructions to this discussion. I'm going to start by adding a table with those four illustrations that I want my students to look at. I'm going to go ahead and click on the table button and then add a two by two table. Then I have all of these images inside my Google Drive. So I'm going to click on the plugin and then click on my Google Apps. And then this will bring up my Google Drive that I can search to find my resources that I've already curated for this lesson. I'm going to then click on the image I want to embed and then click embed. I'll then repeat that process with three other images. Now, right now, this table looks huge. Once I save it, it will look a lot better. I now need to add some instructions. It can be a little bit tricky to get in front of that table, but I'm gonna put my cursor right here at the top and kind of use my arrow key and then press enter to give myself some space above that table. Now I can type in my instructions. I also like to add a line about being able to get instructions for how to actually post on a discussion. So need help posting, click here. I like to link this to a video so that way my students who may never have posted on a discussion before can watch that video quickly and be able to know what is expected for our discussions. I try to do this at the beginning of the year until my students are used to posting on a discussion. Canvas makes it super easy to turn this text into a link. So now I can highlight that text and then click on the link. I could link within the course, but for this I'm gonna use an external link and I have a video that I like to use from my Google Drive and I'm just going to get that shareable link and then paste it back over in Canvas. And now my instructions and resources for my students with this discussion are ready to go. I can then also allow threaded replies and liking and I could even add it to my students to do list if I wanted to. I can even make it a graded discussion if I wanted to. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now I have those instructions, that video if my students need it, and then the illustrations I would like for my students to look at and then respond to in the discussion. When I click next, it will then take me to that assignment. From here, I can click edit. I can then add my details. Again, I like to include little emojis just to help students kind of visually see what I'm expecting. I've also added a link here um, to some step-by-step -step instructions. I can also add an audio to this by clicking on the media edition, and then I can upload record media. And from here, I'm gonna click on record but I am going to turn off my webcam and then I'm able to do a audio recording only. So I can record my instructions here and then click finish and save. And then it will put those instructions right onto that page. Then I can also add points. I can make sure that it is an online submission and I'm going to do a file upload. And then I can make sure that it has a due date. And at that point, then I can save. Then I can click next. And again, I could add details to this page. And then the very last page of my module is that stop page. And then my students, when they click this, can return back home. Hopefully this shows you how you can create all those different components of a module to create a learning path for your students. And the last thing you'd want to do is make sure that you publish. And what's nice is all of these things are unpublished right now, but as soon as I click on the publish button for this module, it will publish after I refresh all of the components for that module. And now this module is ready to be used with your students. The last thing I'm going to show is how then from my home page, I can link that get started button to the very first page of the module. So then I can click edit, then select my button. It's currently linked already. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that link. And then I'm going to select the image again 
and this time I'm going to select course link pages and then I'm going to select that instruction page that I just created as part of my module also I know my alphabet <laughs> and now when I click save my students can click this get started button and it will take them to the very first page of the module Hopefully this video gave you a better understanding of how you can create all those individual components within a Canvas module.